There was once a young fellow who enlisted as a soldier, conducting himself bravely, and was always the foremost when it rained bullets. So long as the war lasted, all went well, but when peace was made, he received his dismissal, and the captain said he might go where he liked. His parents were dead, and he no longer had a home. The soldier had nothing left but his gun, so he took that on his shoulder and went forth into the world. Now that the war is over, what am I gonna do? I have no place to call my own, no one to go home to. I've always been in the fast lane and that's where I want to stay. To become a regular Joe, I'll only waste away. So I'm in the slow track again. My patience starts wearing thin It gets to the point where I almost start to lose control And it gets so bad I can feel it within my soul Working eight hours a day That's not who I am To punch in the clock for five days a week Is a monotonous sham I'd rather be where the action is Not working nine to five but with the war being over, how am I supposed to survive? For I'm in the slow track again Hoping opportunity will rear its head And you think, for all I've done I'd have money, but I have none It seems everything I do always ends like this It doesn't change Just a penniless nobody with no chance for wealth or fame Cause I'm in the slow track again Hoping opportunity will rear its head I'm starting to lose control And I'm ready to sell my soul To anyone who helps me get out of this rut I'm in I need someone to help me get out of this rut I'm in I need someone to help me get out of this rut I'm in Suddenly, a strange man enters from out of nowhere. Who are you? Someone who can help you. I already know what you are in need of. Money and possessions you shall have as much as you can make away with. But first, I must know if you are fearless, that I may not bestow my money in vain. A soldier and fear? How can those two things go together? Let me prove it to you. Very well, then. Look behind you. <coughs> Oh, I will tickle your nose for you, so that you shall soon lose your fancy for growling. I see quite well that you are not wanting in courage, but there is still another condition which you will have to fulfill. If it does not endanger my salvation, if it does, I'll have nothing to do with it. You will look to that for yourself. You've spent your life saving others from danger. And look where you are now What I am offering comes once in a lifetime You only have to vow That for only seven short years You do just what I ask And what you get in return is money You'll be swimming in money You'll have so much that you will really never know What to do with it all Money who doesn't love money? If you just agree to my terms, I guarantee you a life of delight. You'll be richer than Midas, I guarantee. No more troubles or sorrows, and no more anxious tomorrows. All this can be yours. And what's more, it all is tax-free money It's sweeter than honey Come on, there's no need to decline All you have to do is sign On the dotted line What are your conditions? 
You shall, for the next seven years, neither wash yourself, shave your beard, nor cut your hair and nails. You shall be called Bearskin. I will give you a coat and a cloak, which during this time you must wear. If you die during these seven years or tell anyone of our deal, you are mine. If you remain alive and haven't told anyone, you are free and rich to boot for all the rest of your life. You shouldn't listen to him. Put a plug in it, Mary Poppins, or I'll shove that storybook right up your ass. And now, if you have this coat on your back and put your hand into the pocket, you'll always find it full of money. See for yourself. Well, what do you say? I say, what the hell I'll do with money? There's nothing like money. Who says that the meek get the earth? It goes to the ones who take a chance. Money. I knew you love money. I do. And if you think that you will win, guess what, Buster? You don't stand a chance. I'll be watching you closely. You stupid human walking money tree. I'll anxiously wait for the day When you slip up And I take your soul to hell, money It made you so greedy And now that you've signed on the line I hope you screw up or die So that you'll be mine So that you'll be mine So that you'll be mine You're now a target boy, the bullseye is your soul How could you not know just who that was? It wasn't Santa Claus, or a young and McMahon And only you are the cause for blame You should have stopped to think before you acted Now it's way too late, you've made a deal with the devil You've made a deal with the devil and it will cost you your very soul. Why don't you do me a favor and shut up? I tried to warn you. Why didn't you listen to me? I don't even know who the hell you are. I'm the narrator. The narrator? Hey, buddy, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it when I told you to shut up. I hope there's no hard feelings. It's all right. I can understand with all this new pressure you have now and all. Good. Now that that's all settled, how about you flip back a couple of those pages and uh, erase that teensy little part where I signed the contract? I'll make it worth your while. Can't do that. Why not? I said I was sorry. It's not that. I'm the narrator, not the author. I can't change what's been written. Then rip the damn page out! You're gonna have to deal with the consequences and figure a way out of this mess. This is your chance to prove to yourself you can do anything. If you put your mind to it, there is nothing that you cannot face. Take one step at a time, then you will realize that you now stand at the crossroad of life. There are two roads that you can take, just one will set you free from your deal with the devil. That lousy deal with the devil. Maybe one day you'll gain your soul. Time is now your enemy Tick tock, tick tock Now you're gonna have to flee for your life You must ask people to pray for you Cause you made a deal with the devil That one-sided deal with the devil And he's waiting for your soul During the first year, his appearance was passable, but during the second, he began to look like a monster. Whosoever saw him ran away, but since everywhere he went, he gave the poor money to pray that he might not die during the seven years, as he paid well for everything he still always found shelter. In the fourth year, he ended up in Rhode Island. He went to the Holiday Inn in Providence, and the manager would not receive him. But as Bearskin thrust his hand into his pocket, 
and pulled out a handful of money, the manager let himself be persuaded and gave him a room. Could you have room service bring something up to my room, please? We can't do that, sir. It's almost midnight and the kitchen's been closed since ten. Whoa, I'll have something brought right up to you. How about tonight's special? A meatball grinder and a side salad. A what? A grinder, sir. What the hell is a grinder? It's a sandwich, sir. Usually made with a torpedo roll. Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? <laughs> That'll be fine. Grinder. Sheesh. Midnight. Another day has come and gone. Cross it off the calendar. One day less to fear While another begins Lately This has been my one routine Dreading every hour Every moment of each day Wishing there was a simple way To erase the choice I made, but I know it's not to be. I thought all this would be so easy, just a little miscomfort. I wish that I could have seen that not only. Was this bargain one vast mistake? It has forced me to be all alone. Lonely, that's what I am. Lonely, no one wants to be my friend. They are all afraid. I might harm them Because of this They judge me on just what they see They don't understand I wish I could tell them why Life for me is one goodbye Feels like every day I die Cause I'm despised by my fellow man Sometimes when I just cannot take no more I want to put an end to it all But I know it's wrong It would damn my soul Furthermore it would only seal the fact That the devil would win And that just cannot be For a soldier never fails This is real, not a fairy tale So I must keep going Please, don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. You're human? You'd never know it to look at me, but yes. They call me Bearskin. Bearskin? Are you in a rock band or something? <laughs> no. Oh, well, in any case, the name's Nathaniel. But you can just call me Nate. Well, Nate, you sounded like you needed help. Is there anything I can do? If only you could... I came all the way out here from D.C. for a job interview, and I didn't get it. I'm sorry to hear it. You're sorry? I don't know what I'm going to do. 
I needed that job to pay off the 15 credit cards I maxed out trying to support three grown daughters. It's not easy being a single parent these days. I'm going to lose everything. I know it! (laughs) If that is your only trouble, I have plenty of money. That's kind of you, but there's no way you can afford to pay off all that I owe. How much is it? Mm, About $45,000. I want you to have this. This should put you back on track for a while. I can't take this. I don't see how you can't. Take it. How can I ever thank you? You don't have to. But you can do something for me. Anything. Please pray that I will live for another three years. Certainly. That's the least I can do. Come with me. What? You're coming with me. Along with my prayers, I'm going to drive you to D.C. and introduce you to my daughters. All of them are miracles of beauty. And you will choose one of them for yourself as a wife. When she hears what you have done for me, she will not refuse you. You do, in truth, look a little strange. But she will soon put you to right again. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't even know what to say to them, never mind marrying one of them. My career has always come first, and to be honest, I never really had any luck with the opposite sex. Besides, who in their right mind would want me? Trust me, I know my daughters, and never underestimate the power of a woman, or of love. Listen up, my hairy friend, hear what I say. A power of a woman can make men go astray. They have been the cause of many wars and strife. When you fall in love with one, they can change your life They somehow make a man much better than he was It's a scientific fact and it's the truth because A woman's capability to fall in love Is much greater than a man Love makes the world go round It makes you want to sing out loud When you finally find someone to love Don't be a cynic standing on the sidelines Watching all those around you Find love at every corner Gumption is the key to initiative In the game of love Playing the shy type doesn't win anyone over Sometimes in life you have to reach out And grab the ring or it will pass you by Come feel the joy that can only come from love Love makes world go round and makes you want to sing out loud when you finally find someone to love. Life's not a dress rehearsal, it's a party, and now you have your invitation to come and join the fun. Cause love is a wonderful game. Love makes the world go round and makes you Sing out loud when you finally found someone to love. Don't be a cynic standing on the sidelines, watching all those around you find love at every corner. Gumption is the key to initiative in the game of love. Playing the shy type doesn't win anyone over. Sometimes in life you have to reach out and grab the ring or it will pass you by. Come feel the joy that can only come from love. Love makes the world go round, it makes you want to sing out loud when you finally found someone to love. Life's not a dress rehearsal, it's a party, and now I have my invitation. Come and join in the fun Cause love is a wonderful Sing out loud when you find
I'll take you now to Nate's house, where also lived his three daughters. The oldest is Nina. The second one's name is Sherry. The youngest is Anne Marie. Three very beautiful women, but not the happiest people in the world. Yeah, well, you'd be miserable too if you went out with the shit bum I went out with last night. He was such an asshole. What happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's the last time I date an actor. I've never seen a person so preoccupied with his looks and figure like this guy. Oh, and he made sure that everything he said was pronounced and articulated so correctly in round, pear-shaped tones. Oh, it made me sick. Why, it doesn't sound any worse than the date I had. He said he wanted to take me to his apartment and make love all night long. What's wrong with that? Uh, with his boyfriend? Every time it's the same old thing It rarely seems to change The degree of men we've dated Goes from sickening to the strange All we want is a boyfriend in a court To our tastes But instead of easy pickings We end up with the way Just wavy air to take me to restaurants, the theater, the movies, and buys me things to wear. But all that I seem to attract have no money and bald and pursued by the FBI. I'm so sick and tired of it. Why am I always attracting the wrong type of guy? The man that I look for is well built, has muscles, and very equipped. Seduce me and knows what he's doing under the sheet But I get the scrawny ones who underneath just to see It needs to be magnified I'm so sick and tired of it Why am I always attracting the wrong type of guy? If they bring me a rose, it has thorns If it's candy, I get it's all melted If we go would surely do but they're hairy and dumpy and impotent and have a minimal IQ we don't think we're picky or shallow or limited but there's one thing we can't deny that when it comes to men we get the worst of them it's always the wrong type of guy Awfully quiet over there. Don't you have anything to say? Well, I agree you two are pathetic. Really? 
Well, I don't see a parade of men trampling down your door. That's because I don't think of them as wallets with pants. I think she's calling us trite. You said it, not me. Uh, what do you look for in a man? Someone who thinks of me as more than two breasts and a quickie. Honey, you were born in the wrong time. Those kind are extinct. Oh, I don't know. I think the right one's out there, somewhere. Oh, will ever find a man who knows just how to do the simple things? Some unexpected flowers and a little kiss goodnight, or maybe chocolate candy dates. Today it is so hard to be a girl in love, or can it be? I will never find a man who knows just how to do the simple things. To hold my hand or read a poem or open doors for me or serenade a simple song. For me it's ABC and one, two, three, and courtesy and chivalry and can it be all for me? Or can it be? I will never find a man who knows just how to do the simple things. A reservation dinner with a little wine rosé or sit by candlelight for two. Today it is so hard to be a girl in love. Or can it be? I will never find a man who knows just how to do the simple things. Some conversation simple and a tender word for me or maybe holding out my chair. For me it's ABC and one, two, three, and courtesy and chivalry and can it be all for me? Is anyone home? Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. What happened? How did it go? Never mind about that. I have wonderful news. Look at you. You're so excited. I have every right to be. I met this wonderful man who, I can't believe I'm about to say this, gave me the money out of the goodness of his heart to pay off all the credit cards. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not lying to you. Look. It's all there. $45,000. You must have gone to a casino and won all this. I swear to you on your mother's grave, I am not lying. Dad, this isn't normal. Nobody gives you this much without expecting something. What did you have to do for this? Nothing. All he asked me to do was to pray for him. What kind of a wacko is he? He's not a wacko. Actually... Seeing that he gave us this exuberant amount of money, it was my idea to promise him uh, one of you as his wife. Promised us? Does this look like the Middle Ages to you? But I gave him my word. He's a nice guy. A little eccentric, but you like him. And don't forget, girls, the man is filthy rich. He's waiting right outside. You brought him here? I wanted him to meet you. Please, girls, don't embarrass me. Well, I guess there's no harm in meeting him. Where is this knight in shining armor? I'll go get him. You, come in, now. Holy shit! Don't worry. They live on the ground floor. When you said he was filthy rich, you should have said filthy and rich. He's disgusting. How can I accept a husband who no longer has a human form? I will never, never, never marry this beggar. I don't care how rich he is. Uh, besides, uh, <clears throat> I have craps. 
He must be a good man to have helped you out of your trouble. So if you have promised him a bride for doing it, your promise must be kept. My name is Anne Marie. I'm called Bearskin. I have written my name on your half and your name on mine. I beg you to keep your peace carefully. Why? Are you going somewhere? I must still wander about for three years, and if I do not return then, you are free, for I'll be dead. If not, I will return after the three years are over and claim you as my bride. So pray to God to preserve my life. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Hopefully I will see you again. Anne-Marie. Poor Anne-Marie. From that day forth, she dressed entirely in black. And when she thought of her future bridegroom, tears came to her eyes. <laughs> A girl find her true love Now my life is over All my dreams are gone No more chasing rainbows For love has passed me by Though I'll keep my going to have to kiss him. Imagine how much air freshener you're going to have to buy. If he dies first, you can always use his carcass as a bearskin rug. <laughs> Maybe there's a lining within my gloomy cloud. Maybe he'll forget me. Bearskin, however, traveled about the world from one place to another, did good where he was able, and gave generously to the poor, that they might pray for him. Thank you so much, Brother Bearskin, for your generous offering to help refurnish our church's roof. Is there anything that we can do for you? Please, pray for my soul. Brother Bearskin, you shall have my prayers and that of the whole congregation. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, our dear Brother Bearskin has graciously given us the necessary funds to fix the roof of this humble church, and he has asked nothing in return but prayers for his mortal soul. So I ask you now, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I ask you now to pray for our dear Brother Bearskin, and in benefiting harmony with this occasion, I say we open our hymnals to number 514. I want Jesus to walk with me. Number 514, Brother Narrator, will you please lead the congregation? All right, everybody, we need your prayers. So put your hands together and let's praise the Lord. Oh, I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh, I want Jesus to walk with me. Oh, 
As the last day of the seven years dawned, he went once more out onto the heath and seated himself beneath the circle of trees. It was not long before the devil stood before him and looked angrily at him. He threw Bearskin his old coat. Here is your coat, you lucky son of a bitch. Now give me my green one back. We have not got so far as that yet. You must first make me clean. Whether the devil liked it or not, he was forced to fetch water and wash bearskin, comb his hair, and cut his nails. Oh, shut up! Temper, temper. After the devil finished cleaning up bearskin, he looked like a brave soldier and was much handsomer than he had ever been before. will go and see my love Ever since we met She has always been within my mind I will leave right now And gladly take her as my bride When the devil had gone away Bearskin went into the town Put on a magnificent coat And proceeded to his bride's house are you the one that people call Nate? Yes, General. What can I do for you? Nate? It's me. Bearskin. Get the hell out of here. I'm too old for bad jokes. Nate, this is no joke. It's me. Holy shit. It is you. What happened to you? You look... good. I'll explain everything to you later. Is Anne-Marie here? She's right inside. Do you want me to get her? Please, but don't tell her who I am. Well, who do we have here? I didn't know we were expecting company. Put those imitation silicone things back in the Cracker Jack box where you found them. I'm just trying to show him what kind of prize he'd be getting. He'd be better off with the tattoos. Can we help you with something? Your father is helping me. Thank you. Can we offer you anything? Something to eat? Something to drink? Sex? Uh, I'm all set. Thank you. You'll have to excuse my sister. She's the reason condoms were invented. Don't you come off like Miss Virtuality. I saw him first. So back off, you skanky bitch. Why should I, you walking mattress? Oh! 
because I asked your father's permission if it would be all right to take you out sometime. And he agreed. I can't. I'm engaged to someone else who is expected to return today. Really? Where does he come from, this man you're engaged to? I don't know. Perhaps he will not return to fulfill the engagement. I'm sure he will. I can't believe otherwise. Well, did he give you a betrothal present? He didn't give me anything. What sort of match was that if no token is given? Surely he must have given you some sort of token, since you are engaged. He did leave me a token. I'm just embarrassed to say what it is. It makes no difference how poor it may be, or how worthless. I would like to see it, though. I am your betrothed bridegroom, whom you saw as bearskin. But through God's grace, I have again received my human form, and have once more become clean. Forever, I'll follow 
just for the lonely. And I'm not talking about Frick and Frack that just entered the church. I'm talking about me. You know why? Well, okay, obviously you don't know why. So you know what? I'm gonna tell ya! Remember when you saw Anne Marie's sisters, Nina and Sherry, run off looking downright pissed off? Well, they were so full of anger and rage that the handsome soldier was really bearskin, whom they had rejected, that Nina drowned herself in a well and Sherry hanged herself on a tree. <laughs> So you see, I've now got two souls in the place of his one! <laughs>